And my biggest takeaway for you, if you're using a camera, is please understand these devices do not replace fundamental search methods or fire attack. You've got to be fundamentally sound. As you see this firefighter searching the room and, and grabbing a hold of this makeshift crib, he pulls the crib down to do a crib dump. He doesn't pick the baby up, raise it up high. He searches behind the crib because he did move the furniture. You know, you don't typically have to move behind it, but he did move it. And he gets on that wall. Notice that wall is white hot. There is fire behind this wall. The door is closed. This is a VES scenario. He'll open the door and search beyond the door and make the determination. Can he push down that hallway? That's up to the firefighter based on their training. Right there, you can see convection currents moving left to right. That seemingly innocent grayscale moving over your head. The camera uses 256 contrasting shades of gray. Under stress, that is very hard to differentiate which way it is. If you take the time and do that initial scan, you will know where you're going. Even if the camera fails, you know the layout, you know the victim locations potentially, and the fire. We were taught life, lay, life fire layout. I teach life layout fire. Because if you look for fire first, when you're in a building, you know it's on fire. The camera will degrade in image clarity, and you will miss something. Because whether you're a three-month rookie or 30-year veteran, we will focus on the fire. Victim presentation is probably one of the biggest concerns, issues, misconceptions I hear from firefighters. Well, we didn't see the victim. We want a camera that's going to allow us to see the victim. Well, first of all, we train incorrectly. We use artificial smoke and we heat up victims. That's not how a person is going to present in a fire. You're going to look here. He's searching for a baby doll. It's a mile high fire conference where my guys just came from. Is the background hot or cold? If the fire environment is hot and you're a 92 to 96 degree skin temperature victim with any visible skin, you're going to show up differently than a white hot heated mannequin that you paid a lot of money for that doesn't represent what a person looks like in a fire. If that person is alive, they may look cold if any visible skin is visible, if they're not covered up. But if they're deceased or burned up, they may look completely different because now they're a passive emitter, meaning they are not emitting energy. They're absorbing it like your gear and they may blend in. And if you're using the wrong type of camera, a situational awareness camera, you may not see anybody at all. Is it a high resolution camera, low resolution camera? Is the camera in high sensitivity or low sensitivity? What if you got one of those cameras that has all these different options and you're in the wrong application mode because you like rainbow color palette? Rainbow color palettes should never be placed on a fire service camera. They're not designed for high heat environments. Yet there are three manufacturers that allow you to have that option. So make sure you understand that tool will show you what it's designed to show you, but it has defined limitations. And if you don't know which application mode to use and how it will perform, you will miss the victim, the layout, the fire, and a lot of things, even though the device can show it to you. It's only as good as the person holding it. And this is an example of that. This is a person above a fire on the second floor awaiting rescue with a very high resolution camera where the firefighter did not wipe the lens. This victim was found not because of the thermal imaging camera, but because he was calling out and the victim answered him. How many of those does firefighter rescue point out that they are found by sound? Someone called out and they answered, they heard them. In this case, this is what a grown man looks like in the fetal position on the second floor above a fire. Would you expect him to look like that? And he's alive and talking. So that's one victim presentation. This is a victim directly next to a window from a VES scenario where an actual fire, this is a person who is in cardiac arrest, and you can see the person's leg. Dark, cold. This room is hot. It's above the fire. Did you expect that person to look like that? So I've showed you two victims that look completely different. What happens if the victim was in the fire room, deceased, and burned up? Would you expect them to look like this from a very good camera, Bullard LDX? The lens was not wiped. That is the lower body half of a lady bent back and burned over a chair. If you look really closely, which most people will not, you can see legs. Dead. I'm not trying to be mor morbid or gro grotesque or anything like that, but I think we do a disservice to firefighters with 1403 and live fire requirements and how we're allowed to teach them to search because we're teaching them to search to find rescue Randy mannequins, not Randy the citizen. And that's a problem. And there has to be some give and take between the compliance and consistent standard organizations and real life to understand that we work in, a, in a, a, an environment that people die, including us. 
And until we start training them to reflect that environment, we will continue to fail because we do this. We use fake smoke because fake smoke machines are everywhere, which are moisture-based. Make sure you're using glycerin-based if you use one, not glycol-based because glycol is going to cause you health problems. You want to make sure that you, you don't use these for search because look here. My, my firefighters show up white hot on a cool fall day because they are the hottest thing in the room. There is no fire in here. It's palletized maze with hoarding conditions. There's a smoke machine in the middle and there's a mannequin with an electric blanket wrapped around it. There's your smoke machine. Not a whole lot of contrast. We're crawling on all fours, which we should not be doing, right? That's another training scar or training wound, as my friend has taught me. And then I say, all right, well, we'll play your game. If we're going to play that, we scan over here and say, boom, what's that white thing over there? That's a mannequin with an electric blanket wrapped around. It. That's not how a person's going to present. If that person was in a room with the door closed, sure, they may show up white hot. Old thermal imaging instructors will call it a thermal inversion. You look white hot outside, you go inside a fire, you look dark. It's not really inversion. It's the background temperature. The camera focuses in on the majority of the heat, and that's what it focuses on. If you have stare at a bright light, you cannot see details around the bright light. It's physically impossible for your eye to do so. The camera does the same thing, but does it with heat. It focuses in on the heat, and those areas that are cooler don't get the attention they deserve because it has two operating modes, high or low sensitivity. And most of the time, the cameras that work in low sensitivity lose detail, causing you to lose. And you're like, I thought you was going to teach me about how thermal imaging cameras are the best thing since sliced bread. They're not. There's a lot of disadvantages to them. And the biggest disadvantage is us. I can teach you how to use them to, to search faster and find the fire faster. But if you don't know the limitations of the device, I think we're doing people a disservice. And this is another one. With RIT and Mayday scenarios, firefighter turnout gear absorbs energy. Do yourself a favor and look up the resources I'll share with you in a little bit. And understand that your gear absorbs energy, and after a while, you may blend in with the background. If you blend in with the background, your camera can't see you. But yet, when this fire instructor turns around, you can clearly see his SCBA cylinder. And those of you who are air pack gurus, you can tell that's a Scott air pack. And you can tell he is breathing. He or she is breathing because it is colder. You can see that second stage. You can see the bottles dark. That's a great little trick when you're doing RIT training. So make sure you understand that victims, whether firefighters or people, may show up completely different based on those variables we shared with you. Because if you think you're going to go in and just easily see the victim, I will be the one to disappoint you and tell you it's not that easy. This is not looking for a lost person in the woods. This is looking for a heat signature that may not have a heat signature in an environment that is the worst case in the world to use a thermal imaging camera. Because firefighters don't take care of these devices and we don't wipe the lens. I can, I will share with you the data recently discovered by my company of how many failures just in the last year that resulted in injuries with firefighters because they didn't wipe the lens. And when they were done with the fire, like my friend Jim Moss here, they left it like this for their counterparts at shift change to clean up. If you think this device is going to work well like this, it's not. That's a germanium window. That lens on the front, if it's not clean, it will not see. So you have to wipe it periodically with that wonderfully dirty blue fire glove or whatever glove you wear. And then when you get back to the station, clean the tick with soap and water and clean the lens with an alcohol wipe. Please do not clean it with a grill brush. I saw that. And then that lens is anywhere between $300 to $1,000, not covered under warranty. And another thing, these are not hammers. Firefighters drag them, smash out windows with them, and realize that they smashed the germanium window, and now they got to pay for it. I got four of them sitting over here I have to replace from my guys tearing stuff up. And if you want to know how big a difference not wiping the lens makes, look at this picture from my instructor, Chief John Lockley, taking the firefighter coming up the stairs, making entry, and 90 seconds later, exiting the structure without wiping the lens. Look at the loss of detail on the image on the right. That is dramatic. If you're a photographer, you understand what filters do. This is a neutral density filter. Basically, moisture is getting on the lens. It can't filter all that out, and it's picking up what it can and giving you the pieces of that image. You're getting puzzle pieces. You're not getting the whole image. Where if we simply wipe the lens, we get a better image. Well, we made you a short little video to show you what that looks like. This is a, basically a flashover container fire behavior training. And we're going to watch the fire grow. And as the fire grows, we get moisture 
building up on our lens. And watch what happens as the moisture builds up, image degrades, and watch when we wipe the lens. Really clear image here on the Seek Attack Pro. We're doing a little thermal rebound demonstration showing why you need to open the nozzle when you flow down a hallway. And then you see how clear the firefighters are and they gradually start to gray out. The fire starts to look like it's going away. Everything starts to get gray and it's like, oh, the camera's whiting out. Nope, not whiting out. You got moisture on the lens. Watch what happens when Joey wipes the lens. Whoa, that's a big difference. A clean windshield, I might be able to see, right? I'm telling you, this is not common knowledge. Why am I telling you that? Because of this right here. This hurts my heart. This year, four near-miss incidents in May days where firefighters were injured due to failure to wipe the lens and stated the tick whited out. I found it in a NIOSH report. It said the camera was seeing uniform temperatures. It was the firefighter not wiping the lens. NIOSH doesn't understand this. One incident where firefighters were burned as they failed to recognize a full exhaust, a unidirectional flow path, which has killed numerous firefighters, numerous line of duty deaths, and they were burned. One incident where an entire crew was lost and disoriented because they failed to wipe the lens but kept wiping the display. That's like going down the road and wiping the inside of your windshield but not turning the windshield wipers on. You're not going to be able to see. In one incident where a firefighter was disoriented, resulted in a mayday, and the RIT team member also became lost and disoriented. The camera was hardly used. It was picked up. They didn't see anything because they never wiped the lens, and they were standing up the entire time in a stagnant, smoke-filled environment, very large building. This is just this year, and these are incidents that I know about. Now, if I know of seven incidents, how many are actually occurring where firefighters don't know this? Your responsibility is to share this with others so people don't get hurt, injured, or killed.